think it was one, one of those uh, Bible studies that you don't forget in a hurry. So we're still buzzing from that. And Derek is going to read uh, from verse 4 of Psalm 2 to the end, and then I will pray. Thank you, Derek. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations, your inheritance, and the ends of the earth, your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Amen. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, we acknowledge you this day, this hour, as the one who is enthroned in the heavens. We thank you, Lord, for your presence among us as we study your word. We thank you for all those who are joining us uh, from through the airwaves, so to speak. We thank you, Lord, that even though you are the maker of the heavens and the earth, that you are the almighty God, yet you, you have compassion uh, for each of us on an individual basis and you express your love and your mercy and your grace towards us. And we pray, uh, Lord, that this hour we will meet with you as we study these amazing verses. And we commit this time to you for your praise, for your glory. Amen. 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 As, as uh, yes. Derek was reading then, I was yes. struck by something that had missed me, the, the last, yes. passed me by the last time, and that's in, in verse 6, how it starts with yet. Mm. And I was, it was suddenly the comparison between the, the, the first five verses and the rebellion of, of the nations, mm. the rebellion of the kings, and the Lord is saying, in spite of you, you know, yes. You, you really don't affect my plans at all, yet, in mm. spite of you, I have installed, or I have set my, what's it, I have set my king on, on, the, on yeah. the, hill, the holy yes. hill of Zion. It, it's just... It's a turning point. It's a turning point, and, and, and it's, there's nothing which will stop God's plan working itself out to fulfilment. So, mm. so yes. which actually puts a, a slight different emphasis as well on the fact that it's a... It's a question, it's a rhetorical question, I suppose, and, you know, a, a question of amazement. You do all this, you know, you, you make your plans. Do you not understand what, how small you are as players mm. in this great scheme? Mm. Yeah. Because I have installed my, yeah. my son mm. on that holy hill of Zion. I've dis it's just... It, it elevates us, doesn't it? it doesn't it? Because, you know, that we sometimes get so preoccupied with the foment on earth, the, yeah. the skirmishes between the nations, and some of them are quite fearsome, but nothing like the scale, no. the majesty on high. That's yeah. right, and it helps us to understand who we are in Christ as well. Yet I have installed my King, and we are in Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I lift you... If only you grasp it, I lift you above all this. Mm. And, you know, we're living in chaotic times at the moment, aren't we? Mm. And, and without forming judgments against one country or another, one leader or another, they are just generally chaotic. Yeah. And yet in, we're lifted above it all. If only we would see it. it if, if we would stop getting, I'm as bad as anybody, it's embroiled in the nitty gritty and day to day of what's yeah. going on and allow ourselves to rise above it in Christ and begin to see it from heaven's perspective, which is where we are now, we would take a different view. Yes, yeah, wonderful. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, and as you say, it's chaotic and the Lord puts them in derision, which is yes. in confusion. And that's yeah. what we're seeing. Yeah. Um, uh, we said, uh, Derek, that we might ask you to do it, if you can cast your mind back to last week, a mm. recap of, of, and it's impossible yes. to actually, you know, recapture the rainbow, as it were, but um, just well, last give us a week, few pointers. We, we really focused on verse 6, which is God's answer to all this rebellion. Mm. 
and, and, and his answer is, yet I have set my king mm. on my holy hill of Zion. And this is one of the great prophecies of the ascension of Christ. Yeah. We said that this is like the keys. We talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, but actually we need to also give due emphasis to the ascension of Christ mm. because that's when he was placed on the throne in authority above all things, given the name above every name. And God has done that. Mm -hmm. And he has said, I've chosen my king and I have established him. And we talked about the fact that, that what that means is that he has sent his anointed one into the earth. Mm -hmm. He has accomplished everything he needed to do mm -hmm. in, in winning our salvation and, and really defeating the enemy. Mm -hmm. And then in his ascension now, he has won the victory. Mm -hmm. And the key is, of course, as John said, when we put our trust in him in the new covenant, we are put into Christ, which means his victory becomes our victory yeah. and his standing becomes our standing yeah. and we are seated with him in heavenly places. And therefore, um, but what we talked about last time, just to very quickly recap, is that the actual ascension is, is of a one with the resurrection. Mm. And we saw a lot of scriptures on that. Yeah. And, and actually we need to understand that the ascension that's being talked about is actually Jesus' ascension on, on the, the morning, morning of the resurrection. Of the resurrection. Yeah. When he appeared to Mary Madeline and said, I am ascending to my Father. Yeah. And, and there were four reasons that's for it. this. Number one, he had to fulfill the fe Feast of First Fruits. Mm. When the first fruits of the harvest is presented before God. Uh, secondly, to present his blood in the heavenly holy of holies to establish the new covenant. He obviously didn't wait 40 days to do that. Yeah. He had to do that then. And having established uh, in his blood, then he was able to receive the Holy Spirit from the Father. And that's why on the next, uh, in that evening, he breathed into his disciples in John 20, mm. said, receive the Holy Spirit, because this is now the new covenant ministry of the Holy Spirit. Before the Holy Spirit was present with them, he said, but he will be in you. Yeah. So this is where they receive the new birth and the, the indwelling Holy Spirit, praise God. D and Derek, can I just yeah. check? So the, the, the presentation of the first fruits to the Father includes, doesn't it, because it's a sheath, includes those who were raised from the dead, right. uh, sort of the moment after Jesus died, Matthew the graves open. 27 talks about that. So that's, that's them as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, that's encouraging, by the way, because it's one thing for the perfect Son of God to be resurrected, but the fact that God also raised up yeah, fallen men right. shows like that model for He us. has the power yes. yeah. to raise us from and, yes. give and glorify us. Yes. Yes. And so, yes, that, that is important. And, um, and that's an interesting point, actually, because they were, they were, their bodies were resurrected and seen in this earth. So, We've always said, haven't we? I said, this, is a, this is a red herring, but never mind. We've always said that the only person in heaven with a glorified body is Jesus. But I wonder if these have got glorified bodies. Yeah, no, absolutely. Bodies. They have. They absolutely. have. They have. And what about Enoch? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, they, I think they yeah. probably have, haven't they? Well, yes, they, they shared in the resurrection. Yes, they did. Now, whether they have the, received I've their full glorification no, they're, they're, is another issue, but yes. they would be in their resurrection bodies. Yes, they would be, yes. I I've as opposed to in, in, in the spiritual to bodies, which most other... Hmm? Yes, sorry, I was talking over you. I, I've never heard Enoch referred to as a, as a red herring. herring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they'll be in their That's resurrected right. bodies, exactly. which I agree, will not have received the fullness of the glorification yeah. yet, because that will yeah. happen when we come to earth and yeah. rule reign. But whereas everybody else is operating as it were in a spiritual body, mm. they'll be in their resurrected yes. bodies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so did we get to the fourth? So, and then the fourth one is the main one as far as Psalm 2 is concerned, mm. because this is when he received all authority in heaven and yeah. earth. That we saw that in Daniel 7, mm. 13 and 14, because there are New Testament scriptures about him being given the name above every name. Yeah. Um, but he had to receive all authority, not in his ascension after 40 days, because during those 40 days, in Matthew 28, 18, he says, all authority has been given to me yeah. in heaven and earth. Yeah. So he must have received it on the morning of the, of the resurrection. He, Daniel describes this moment as mm. the son of man appearing before the throne of God, mm. 
mm-hmm. Father, and receiving dominion over all nations. Yeah. So the important thing to realize is the ascension is the, the foundation, really, for our, for us right now in the church age, mm-hmm. for our authority in the spiritual warfare, but also it's the, the foundation for the messianic kingdom because right now Jesus already has that authority legally. He's only waiting for the Father to release him to take possession of this earth. So there's a future coming of Christ when he will actually exercise that authority and reign on earth from Jerusalem. So So we're we're between those two comings. And and in this Bible study, we're between, as it were, verses seven and eight, because the decree continues. Um, he starts with, you are my son, today I've become your father. And then he, he moves on to talk of the nations um, as an inheritance and the ends of the earth a possession. Um, it is, uh, uh, that's going to absorb us, I think, for the next few minutes. <laughs> Understatement. But um, you know, how do you distinguish the inheritance and the possession? One oh, from well, the well, other. Can we? Yeah, no, well, of course. I'm just moving it, it in order. To, uh, yeah, yeah, no, please do. Which order? <laughs> well, it might be worth taking a peep at Psalm 110. Quickly. Yes, please. Yeah. please um, yeah. Because this is like a twin psalm. Yeah. With two. And by the way, these two psalms are the psalms that are quoted most often in the New Testament, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. often together. So they kind of fit together. But for now, we'll, perhaps we would just look at the f- the first verse. Mm-hmm. The Lord said to my Lord, mm-hmm. sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Mm-hmm. So again, it's the same thing. The, the, the Lord says to Christ, mm-hmm. um, David's Lord, sit at my right hand. That's the ascension. That's his exaltation to, to the right hand. That's when he was conferred all authority. Mm-hmm. Uh, but notice there's a delay until yeah. I make your enemies, yeah. your footstool. So there's a future time when d- there's a, a time during which the enemies still operate. Mm-hmm. Even though he has all authority, he's defeated them, mm-hmm. he has all authority over them, but the enemies are allowed to continue. Mm-hmm. But there will be a time when he's going to move in judgment and put all those enemies, make, make those enemies his yeah. footstool. Yeah. It's interesting that it, the, the following verses are, I'll extend your scepter from Zion. Yeah. So he's installed, as it says, his king yes. on Zion, and he will extend the rule from there. And that's there. the church age now, you yeah. see, because yeah. notice in verse two, let's do that yeah. then. The Lord will Is that send- the right order? <laughs> doing well. The, the rod of your strength out of Zion. Mm. So you could see that as out of, from heaven, but also God's people are called Zion sometimes. Mm. So in a sense, he extends his rule through us. Mm. And he says, rule in the midst of your enemies. Yeah. So in the church age, the enemies are mm. active. Yeah. But he's given us authority that we can rule, you know, yeah. through our prayers, through the name of Jesus. We can exercise authority in his name, to, mm. especially to, to fulfill our mission. Interesting, um, guy, you know, you've... The thing is, as soon as you open a scripture, there, there are the follow-on scriptures. And we were talking about Melchizedek last week, and there it is in verse 4 of, of Psalm 110. Well, we, we, let's, let's, but I've jumped verse 3, of course. Well, of course. Because that's... Well, that's what I do. That's rather good. That's why I'm here. You know. <laughs> your people, this is us now, mm. right? Your people shall be volunteers in the yeah. day of your power yeah. or your, your rulership. So we, for, for God to extend his rule through us and his power through us, we have to volunteer. Mm-hmm. We have to surrender to him and volunteer f- for him to flow through us mm-hmm. and in the beauties of holiness. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it actually literally is in the day of your army. So we're part of the army of the Lord, mm-hmm. and, and it's an army of priests. It's yeah. literally, we are in the beauties or, or robed in holy garments. Yeah. And then it says, from the womb of the morning, that speaks of our new birth. We, we, right. We've been born again. Right. And then, sorry, then back yeah. to you with verse... Well, uh, only, well, uh, you, know, you know me, I'll go all the way to the end of, <laughs> of the psalm, which gets pretty gruesome, but it is dealing with judging. So, of That's course, he's a coming. priest. Yes of the order of Melchizedek. And then it talks about, yeah, the, the kings who are crushed. 
as I know I'm jumping, but verse 9 is you'll rule them with an iron scepter in verse 9 of Psalm 2 uh, and dash them to pieces like pottery. It's almost sort of a parallel, you know, like putting tracing paper over one psalm and, and, lay, and laying it out over the other because those kings of the earth will be judged, as you say, at the second coming. Let me, let me throw one in. Cause I, th- oh, pl- I don't mind you interrupting me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, Churchill once said, this, don't interrupt me while I'm trying to interrupt you. This might, <laughs> this might be interesting too, because when, when it says the Lord, that's Yahweh, yeah. it says to my Lord, Adon. Yeah. yeah. Now that isn't necessarily a divine title, Adon. Mm. Mm. It's somebody who is senior, because we know Christ is, is God. Yeah. But notice verse 6, um, verse 5. By the way, we're in Psalm 110, verse 6. Yeah. Verse 5, sorry. Verse 5, sorry. The Lord is at your right hand. Yeah. But that doesn't make sense because who's at the right hand? Mm. It's Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, right? Yeah. But now it's talking about the Lord mm-hmm. is at your right hand. doesn't make sense. But notice the is is at is in italics. Yeah. So it is actually the Lord at your right hand. Mm. So it's speaking to God the Father, talking about the Lord at your right hand. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But the word for Lord here is Adonai. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a divine title. Only God is Adonai. Yeah. yeah. So what that's saying is that the Lord at the right hand in verse one, mm. who we know is Christ, mm. is actually Adonai. Mm. He is God. Yeah. He's the God man. It's wonderful. Just a little. No, no, it's, yeah, not, it's yeah. not small. Um, this is the point about God's word. You can literally open these verses and there's just so much. You know, we, we, we mere mortals, you know, in Bible study, follow one, one sort of psalm at a time. And we say, right, and we're still in Psalm 2. But the Lord has another idea because as last week, you know, we're we're sort of ranging over so many parallel scriptures inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's, it's really humbling. I, d- I, never, I never see myself, as it were, um, definitely not an expert, but in, in no way standing over the scripture. I feel very much we're sitting under the scripture yes. and the Lord is our... And, and I think one, one lesson that comes out of just the one and a half Psalms that we've studied so far is, uh, you know, and this is sort of general advice, and I'm advising myself, how we, we have to be careful that whose voice is speaking at any one time, because it does chop mm. and change. Yeah. And, and you can either not try to follow it and just be confused, but if you realise who's speaking, just mm. take a moment, to, because the voice changes, doesn't it? Mm. It'll all make much more sense. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. The Lord yeah. said to Quite my important. Lord, yeah. yeah. Before we leave Psalm 110, yeah. the... Um, because it connects with Psalm 100 and Psalm 2, yep. because verse 7 in Psalm 2, so it's Christ speaking, just yes. like you say. Yeah. God has just said, I will install That's right. my king, on, I have installed my king on my holy hill of Zion. Done. Uh, and, but now the voice changes, and then Christ yeah. says, yeah. I will declare the decree of the Lord. Mm. And this is the decree that God spoke into Jesus when he raised him from the dead. And part of that decree is here in Psalm 110 verse four, the Lord has sworn and will not relent, Mm. you are a priest Mm. forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So not only was Jesus given all authority as the king of kings at this point, but he was also given the full authority Mm. as the the high priest of the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. Of course, Melchizedek is a priest and a king. Yeah. So in Christ is combined, he's the anointed one, he's the anointed king, and he's the anointed priest, yeah. and he was the anointed prophet at his baptism. Yeah. So he's the, the big three, the, the prophet, priest, and king. Yeah. But the good news for us is that we are in the anointed one, yeah. in Christ, which means we share in his anointing. That's right. Um, to, to be a priest, mm. which is our prayers, particularly. Mm. Offerings are sacrifices of praise and prayer. We're anointed as prophet to share the gospel, particularly. And we're also anointed as kings yeah. to use the name of Jesus and bind Amen. the enemy. Amen. And Amen. so this decree- By the way, I won't sing it again because I sung it last week. Um, but I, I was just reflecting on the fact that 
the, the great song on this album, um, uh, we, You Are a Priest of the Order of Melchizedek, was on an album by a group called Meet Jesus Music. And that, you know, we are meeting Jesus mm. as we study. Yes. And, they, and these words are us meeting Jesus in the way Abraham met Melchizedek. Mm. And we are meeting Melchizedek as we study his word. So yes. it's, it's very humbling. That's why we're here on Bible yeah, study. We're here is. to meet Jesus. It is. And, and it shows how important this Psalm 110 is vis-a-vis -vis Psalm 2 because it gives us the full picture, mm. which we don't get from Psalm 2 alone. So, uh, as Derek has said, not only is Jesus appointed King of Kings and, and Lord of Lords and given the authority that goes with that, he's also um, appointed High Priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. But again, we are in Christ. Mm. So we too are sons of God. He has mm. begotten us, or we are begotten. But we are also priests, mm. we're told, presumably of the order of Melchizedek. Mm. That's right. We are part of that. We're not priest. Levites, are we? No, no. We, we too are part of that priestly order. Mm. And, and it's just a case of beginning to meditate and understand what authority, in the name of Jesus, it's a delegated authority, we really have. And how we have a, a role, a God-given role in this earth to walk that out, mm. to proclaim the Lordship of Christ and to police this world according to the authority mm. it's been vested in us. Mm. Peter Take says it's already, we are a royal priesthood. We are a we royal already priesthood. already are a royal and priesthood. And we begin to understand what that is here. We really are a royal priesthood. We are part of an everlasting priesthood. A high priest with, you know, without mother or father. Without genealogy, it says, isn't it, when yeah. he's first introduced. I mean, it's just extraordinary. And it's, you know, who are we in Christ? Well, we're just starting to get a picture. Could we bandy these words about? I know, I'm in Christ, I know. I'm the righteous God in I Christ know. Jesus. You know, great stuff. Yeah. But what does it mean? We're just starting to get a hold of it here. This victory that is assured of Christ, but is withheld. Yeah. You know, with, uh, Derek said the, 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 the enemies are not, all the enemies are not yet his footstool. Yeah. But it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. done deal, it's going to happen. So there, there is a follow-on from his enemies being his footstool to this verse 8, if I'm not going too far ahead. Well, um, uh, I'll make the nations your inheritance. That's a kind of... But, the, but, but there's but more to it than that. My question is, is, how much, throwing this out, is the church being used, if it would do its job, at reducing Christ's enemies to his footstool. Because we're his ambassadors on earth at the moment. Mm. Yeah. So is that part of our job description, so to speak, by walking in the spirit in absolute obedience to the Lord, mm. that we can, as it were, he's done all the conquering, but there's a bit of, there's a bit of residual work to do, isn't there? I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm if, thinking if, on my feet here. If we're following biblical language, I wouldn't use that language. Okay. I believe that the time Making them your footstool is judgment, and we're okay, not, yeah, we yeah, not yeah, instruments yeah. of judgment. No, no, we're not. But I think what applies is rule in the midst of your enemies. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's we are it. meant to exercise that, that authority. That's, that's, that's what I was trying to say, exactly. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, yeah. Good. Okay. The judgment time is... So you've mentioned yeah. twice, because I keep skipping to verse 8, uh, verse 7. Yeah, you want to miss... Because we really went for it in, on verse 6, and um, yeah, because you know, let's get to justice. Verse, verse 7 is so important, because this is Jesus speaking, saying, I will declare, declare the decree hmm. the Lord has said to me. So this, the whole foundation is this decree. Yeah. This is the decree that God spoke into Jesus when he raised him from, from the dead and raised him far above, seated him on his throne. And we already saw part of that decree is you are a priest. Mm -hmm. And why it's particularly personal for us is if we accept Christ, we are in Christ. And that decree comes on us too. Yeah. He's, not, he's the anointed one. But if we are in Christ, then all the anointings that go with that decree to be a prophet, priest, and king, for example, um, is now we are empowered to pray. 
We are empowered to witness. We, we are empowered to rule in his name, mm. you see. So this decree we can apply to ourselves too, right? Absolutely. So the, what the first part of the decree that's essential is to do with identity, all right? This is the first thing that we must embrace if we're going to be effective for the Lord. Yeah. And he says, you are my son, this day I have begotten thee. Yeah. So, so the first thing we though is declare. that that's um, in the primary sense, it's the Lord, the identity of the Lord Jesus. And then yes. secondarily, it's our identity in him that gives us the identity. Yes, because as we're born again, the Spirit of God says, you, my son, yeah. or you, my daughter, yeah. Mm. Today I have begotten you. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That's the foundation of our identity yes. is that we are sons of God. We are yeah. children of God. Yeah. That is before we are warriors in his army, before we are anything else. Yeah. We, are, we are his sons. Yeah. And, but notice this is such a key verse. It's quoted three times in the New Testament. It's worth mm. just having a look at that mm. to understand it. But yeah. the first thing you need to understand, we, we know that Christ is the Son of God, God the Son, but this is talking about his humanity. This is something that happened in time. This day I have begotten That's you. Right. So this is talking about the, the, he took, he identified with our humanity. He took it all, took the curse on the cross. Mm -hmm. But then in his resurrection, God, as it were, regenerated and glorified his humanity mm -hmm. and raised him the, that at the name of Jesus, that's the name of a man, Jesus. Right. Every knee should bow. Yeah. So he is God. Mm -hmm. But the focus is on his humanity because that allows us to participate in that through union with him, yeah. through his humanity, mm -hmm. we receive mm -hmm. that same anointing. Mm -hmm. So the spirit that regenerated his humanity, we eventually we'll get the full glorification ourselves. But right now, that spirit has come in when we accept him, yeah. he comes into our spirit and we are born again. I know. Praise God. Wonderful. And that means we are children of God. So we, we need to... And that spirit, as it was, it says in Romans 8, you know, by which we cry, Abba, Father, mm -hmm. witnesses to our spirit, yes. yeah. speaks to us. And that's who we are. And that's, this is what we should proclaim, you know. Um, in, that's the first thing is to, to, to confess. Yeah. I am a child of God. Yeah. I belong to God. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're at under spiritual attack. And as you said last week, you know, he, um, he breathed on them. They, they became spiritually alive. Yeah. They weren't baptized in the spirit, but they, yeah. you know, received the spirit. That's right. And, and we must say, I am a new creation. Yeah. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. I, this is our identity, you see, mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. But quickly looking at Acts 13, 33, this is yes, the New please. Testament yeah. references yeah. just to confirm this. Acts 13, 33 yeah. tells us that this was happened at mm -hmm. the resurrection. Mm -hmm. God fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus that's his resurrection ascension. As it is also written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Yeah. So these are the words that God spoke and whatever, God, like let there be light, there was light. Yeah. And when he said, you are my son, yeah. by the power of the spirit released through his words, he resurrected Christ's humanity and glorified his humanity. And praise God, he did it for us because in union with him, we receive that same exaltation. Then Hebrews 1, mm. verse three to six, he says, when he had purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, yeah. that's the ascension, yeah. having become so much better than the angels. Mm. Now this is not talking about his deity because he always was greater than the angels. It's talking about his humanity. For a little while he was made lower than the angels. But now he has been exalted above the angels, yeah. as he has by an inheritance mm -hmm. obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son today, mm -hmm. I've forgotten you. So these words were said at his ascension. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, I'm in a bit of a blur because I thought, I thought we covered this last week, but we didn't. So it's good that you were going through it now. And then yeah. there's one more that connects he to the Hebrews, high priesthood, yeah. Yeah. which is Hebrews 5.5. 5. Yes. Christ did not glorify himself to become high mm. priest, mm. 
But it was he, the father, who said to him, yeah. you are my son. Yeah. Today I have begotten you. Mm. As he also, and that's verse Psalm 2. Yeah. So then the next verse 6 says, as he also says in other place, yeah. you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Psalm 110. So that verse connects four. the two together. Yeah. Mm. So when this decree declared that you are my son, mm. Also, you are a priest, a king priest, yeah. after the order of Melchizedek. Mm. And in Christ, praise God, we said it before, but in Christ, he says the same to us. Yeah. You are my son, mm. praise God. Mm. And you are a priest, you are empowered to pray through my Holy Spirit, and you are a king. Yeah. You are empowered to rule. Yeah. Yeah. Because we'll come Isn't into it the amazing that, that later. Abraham met... Um, <laughs> Melchizedek. Yes. He met the Lord Jesus basically. Yes. And he he um bowed, didn't he? He 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 gave a sacrifice. Yes, and offered um, tithes. Yeah. He gave him a tithe, that's yeah. right. So it's really acknowledging that um he was the Lord. Yes. It's um yep, we'll come back to that because we are, you know, that's in verse nine about Abraham looking for a city. Yes. So the this identification of us, we are in Psalm 2. I think mm. it's, impo it's yeah. going to be important to That's apply right. it to our lives. Mm. Uh, in Christ, this same decree mm. caused us to be born again and anointed us yeah. so that we play a role in this spiritual warfare that's mm. going on right yeah. now. We are in Christ, and so we are part of what God's weapon in the warfare. Yeah. And, and just to validate that, I would just say... There are three places where Christ is called the firstborn from mm. the dead, mm. which implies, you know, he's not the only one that received the, this, this thing. Colossians 1.18, he's the firstborn from the dead. Mm. Romans 8.29 says that he predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son, yeah. that he might be the firstborn That's right. among many That's brethren. Right. That's right. So we are in the same family, we are sons together, He's the firstborn, obviously, yeah. but we, we come out of the same womb, mm. as it were. And, and finally, Romans 8. It's, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Hebrews 12, 23, yeah. it talks about the church of the firstborn yeah. being in heaven. So Christ is called the firstborn, mm. which, which means that our new birth, and 1 Peter 1, 3, I'll just finish with this one, mm -hmm. um, says that we are born again through the resurrection of yeah. Christ from the dead. Yeah. So, so that's our identity, as you say. Yeah, exactly. That's our identity. So yeah. Identity is a very important thing. It's hugely important. Mm -hmm. um, but but it, there's a sense in which it's even more than that, because, because it's our identity. But I'm aware that there, there are Christians around the world and Christians watching who are fighting what appears to them to be lonely spiritual battles. Perhaps their spouse isn't saved or they long for their children to be saved or there's something going on in their life and they feel lonely. And they, they are perhaps beginning to understand now through what Derek has been explaining that they are in Christ and that this delegated authority that the Father has given to the Son and because we're in him it rolls down to us. Mm. But it can, and, and so it can still feel lonely when you think I'm here kneeling by my bed or whatever I'm doing or yeah. walking the streets praying but I just feel so alone in all this. Mm. But I'm reminded of Romans 6, 5 yeah. which I think is the, another way of looking at the same thing. We are united with Christ. Mm. That's it. There's that, that is an, ins I, I've said this many times on Revelation television, yeah. that's the only time that Greek word is used in the whole Bible and there isn't a stronger word available yeah. to talk about this union. Yeah. It is inseparable. So the surgeon's knife couldn't separate it. And so this is, this is the truth. You are not alone. I will never leave you. You're conjoined. You. You're conjoined, exactly. And that wherever you are, he is too. So you, it's not just a case of being in him, which you are, yeah. um, or of him, which you are, and he in you, which he is, yeah. but you are united to him in an, an inseparable union. Mm. And if you can remember that, you are never alone. So when you're mm. pleading for whatever it is mm. you're pleading, intercessing for whatever it is that's driving away. you, he is with you 
and, and he is absolutely with you. In fact, he, it is he that's inspiring your prayer. Yeah. It's he that's stirring up your spirit in order to get you. And he is praying with you because we're told the Holy Spirit helps us, gives us utterance. He's praying alongside us, you know, and his prayers are always right. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry exactly. if you're, you know, struck, just let it come Christ out. Christ in you, the hope of Absolutely. glory. Absolutely. The hope of glory. Absolutely. Um, just as you opened up there, John, I was thinking of this um, Psalm 87, where it talks about those who maybe, as you say, you're, you're on your own, you know, you yeah. think you're on your own. He says, well, I record, you know, Rahab and Babylon and uh, among those who acknowledge me. Philistia too, this is verse four of Psalm 87. Philistia too and Tyre along with Cush and will say, this one was born in Zion. So that's our birthplace. And it's yeah, yeah. this same Zion where the Lord has installed his king mm. um, on his holy hill yeah. in Zion. So that's our identity. Yes. Our identity is not um, London or no. Spain no. or... No. Uh, it is actually Zion, which is something that's eternal and it has mm. foundations. It's yeah. the city with foundations. So, you know, Abraham met Melchizedek, but it says in, Rome, in um, Hebrews 11, he looked for a city with foundations yes. whose builder and maker was God. So it's not, you know, any tat that is put together on earth. However, mm. as, as much of the skyscrapers look impressive mm. in Dubai or, or in New York, it's nothing compared to the foundations right. of the city of God. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think we're still um, on the same page, but it is all to do with identity, mm. isn't it? Mm. Um, that's, the, that's the starting point. And then, of course, in verse 8, this is all part of the decree, by the yes, way. Yes, yes. Um, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You may have noticed when I read the passage at the beginning, I... Mm. I actually retranslated it mm -hmm. a tiny bit because when it says for your inheritance and for your possession, that word for is not there in the original. All right, the yeah. translators put it in because they couldn't make sense. Yeah, I noticed otherwise. on your Bible you had sort of struck those words yeah. out. So yeah. they're written in italics because yeah. they shouldn't. Yeah. They shouldn't actually be there. Yeah. Um, as I hope you'll agree. Yeah. Because it should be read as ask of me, and, and this is what God is saying to Christ primarily, but also to us, but we'll get to that. Ask of me and I will give you the nations, your inheritance. Yeah. And the uttermost parts of the earth, your possession. In other words, in this decree, he gave Christ all authority in heaven and earth. He gave him yes. his full inheritance. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to ask God for it now. No. It, it's his. Yeah. And that's what he's saying is, I, I give you your inheritance. I, I give you your possession. Mm. So this asking is, is something different. So the first thing to say is that we're just stepping back again to this, um, um, we are sons of God. It, go, it does go back to Romans 8 again. If you're sons, then you're heirs. Yes. So you're not an heir if you're not a son. Right. <laughs> you know, so you are sons. And if you're sons, you are heirs, yes. heirs of Christ, yes. you know, um, uh, that you may share in his glory. Mm. But it goes on, if you share in his glory, you will also share in his sufferings. But that's part of the inheritance yes. that comes to the son who has an identity in Christ. So that's just good. a, a backtrack. Back that's a good link, yeah. yes. Yeah. It starts with sonship, but then it moves on to inheritance. Yeah. And so the thing I'd so like... what is the inheritance? Yeah, that's, that's the, the next thing, isn't yeah. it? What is inheritance? What is possession? Mm -hmm. And if we remember what the psalm is all about, it's the spiritual battle going on between mm -hmm. the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. That's right. On one side is the Lord and his anointed, which includes us, we're in Christ. Mm. On the other side, of course, is all, those, all the others who are in rebellion against God. Mm. But what is the battle over? And the battle is over two things. It's the souls of mankind. I believe the inheritance so primarily. The yeah. what, what did Jesus die for? Mm. He died for an inheritance. That's and right. he, with his blood, he purchased every human being mm -hmm. with his blood. He redeemed us unto God so that we could belong. And that they are, we are his inheritance. That's right. I totally. Right? And that goes back to what we were saying last week in Ephesians 1, that your eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you might know, you know, as it were, the, the glorious inheritance mm. in Christ or that you are his 
the inheritance of this, uh, the in, uh, the of the bridegroom. Our inheritance is is Christ, is God, yeah. and but his and inheritance, all things, his uh, inheritance, his inheritance is, us. is us. That's what he died for. Yeah, you see, and and his possession, I believe, is is the territory of the earth. He also redeemed the earth with his mm. blood, mm. and that's why in Revelation five it talks about the scroll with seven seals. Which I believe the only way to make sense of that is that it's the title deed to the earth. Mm. So when it comes for, for him to judge the earth and take back the earth, the first action he takes is to, is to establish the legal basis, which is to break open the seals. And it says that he was the, the lamb. It's so the one who was sacked when we went through it in detail, yeah. didn't we? That, you know, the, the death. Because resurrection, he's, ascension he's worthy. of the Lord Jesus. He's, he's worthy, worthy to rule. That's what they he's say. The he's worthy to rule because he's the lamb who shed his blood. Yeah. He purchased the earth. Yeah. And just a little background in Jeremiah, I can't remember where, but what they did in the ancient times, if, you redeem, if the redeemer redeemed you know, land that had been lost, he paid the price, there was one, one open document mm -hmm. that said it was his, but they would, in case that was tampered with, there would also be a sealed document that was locked away. Mm. So that when it came to him to take possession of the land, those who objected might say, oh, this, this has been messed with. Yeah. The open document's the Bible. Yeah. But the sealed document is the way you pr he proves it. Yeah. He, he brings out that sealed document, he breaks open the seal, mm. And that way he establishes and proves that he has the legal right to take possession of the land. So that's what he's doing in Revelation 5. He breaks the seals and the judgments start. Yeah, so powerful. You see? So powerful. And so, so powerful. Christ has also, this is the foundation for the kingdom of God on the earth, mm -hmm. the messianic kingdom. That the earth is his possession. The uttermost parts of mm -hmm. the earth belongs to Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and he is going to, t to claim that sometime. Yeah. The most amazing thing about that passage in Revelation is the juxtaposition of this lamb with the lion, lion yeah. of the tribe of yes. Judah. So it does, you know, then, then the two come together so, where he rules, you know, with an iron scepter. It's, it's, we're in a spiritual dimension, aren't we, we John? Are. You know, there's a spiritual warfare that we sometimes are aware of, sometimes not but you know ephesians uh dear um watchman knee you know get wrote the book sit walk stand so we're seated with him in the heavenly places our identity is in him so we walk in the spirit and then having done all we stand yeah but we're not standing in our own strength no we're not we're absolutely not and 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 there's a sense in which this is all outside time and now it's been worked out within time mm. um and so you know i like Derek pointing out that there are words that the translators have put in to help us to understand, but sometimes, not intentionally, mm. they can mislead or water down what is being said. And, and I, I, in, here in, in verse 7 it says, I will declare the decree, the Lord has said to me, you are my son. But he didn't say that, he said, you, my son. That is much more powerful. Mm. They're both, as it were, titles of who you are in Christ, or in, in, in his case, who he was in the Father. You, yeah. my yeah. son. Mm. Yeah. And he says the same to us. You, my son or my daughter. Mm. Uh, that, is, that is really yeah. powerful. Yeah. Now, when did this happen? Well, we, you know, if we go back to Romans 8 again, I'm now talking yeah. about us. Yeah. He says, those whom he foreknew, he also called. Well, when did he foreknow us? Ephesians tells us, before the foundation of the earth. So this is all being worked out temporarily now, mm. but it was established, all of it, before the foundation of the earth, which is extraordinary. And that should give us great sense of security Definitely. and permanence, you know, that, mm. that this, is, this call... It's not down to our fickleness. No, no, this call to, I mean, you, you, Jesus was the, the Son of God always and forever eternally. But here it's been worked out in time so it becomes effective in this dimension, in this world where we now walk. But mm. it's the same for us. Yeah. You know, we were called and called the sons of God even before the creation of the earth. Mm. That's so extraordinary. It's really, um, very humbling. <laughs> very, very humbling. And then, yes, so there's a, a, a little bit of a riddle there because mm -hmm. 
we said, ask of me and I will give you the nations, your inheritance. So in, in one sense, <coughs> the inheritance is, is, is Christ's yeah. already. But then he says, you need to ask, ask. me and I will give it to you. <coughs> uh, and the same, let's just apply it to mm. the uttermost parts of the earth, your possession. So the earth already belongs to him. Mm. So what does it mean that he should ask God yeah. Good. and he will give it to him? Yeah. And there's two aspects, you see, mm -hmm. to, to give, like think of Israel possessing the promised land, mm. right? Mm. They were given the promised land by covenant, That's right. legally, That's right. back with Abraham. With Abraham, really. yeah. But there's a sense in which he gave them the promised land as Joshua went in. He says, wherever you put the sole of your foot, I will give it to you. Mm. So there's, there's, there's one is the legal and the other is the experiential. Mm. So what By the way, I also often say it, you know, in terms of uh, the gift of eternal life, you know, a gift you have to receive. You have to do something, mm. you know, it is a gift and it's mm. yours, but if you don't actually take it, you're never going to experience it. Yeah. Mm. It's like, you know, if you don't step into the promised land, you're not going to experience it. It can be given to you, but so what? Yes, you have were? to let the Holy Spirit lead you into yeah. the promised land. Yeah. Mm. It's, he's, Jesus has paid the price for it. Mm. It's yours. It's like if you inherited a house yeah. in Canada, yeah. you know, exactly. it's yours, but you have to go and possess it. Yeah. Now, in this verse, you see, it's, it's oops, for instance, uh, he's meant to ask. Yeah. So one thing he does is he asks the Father to release to him the possession of the earth. He, yeah. The earth, the title mm. it is his, mm. but he has to, he's submitted to the Father. Mm -hmm. And so only when the Father releases him, and he will one day, yeah. um, he will... And this is, this is Revelation the, 5. Yeah, so we're saying will, it's his possession. Leave, yeah. And what's most interesting is that, is that the, the devil knows this and so this is why you know when he was being, the lord jesus was being tempted he went for this mm. if you worship mm. me yeah. i mean it's ludicrous really when you think that it is already um uh, christ's possession he said if you worship me i'll give it to you try to use you know, try appealing to the yeah. flesh yeah. Um, and i suppose he can do the same to us but if we step outside our covering of, of being in christ we can actually think, well, we can build a ministry here or we can get some territory there, yeah. but we have it in Christ. Well, how yeah. ridiculous. Even, you know, you, you lose it. You lose yeah. it. Yeah. But it, Christ had to work it out in submission yeah. to God. And um, like one day, God will say, go, it's your possession, take it. Mm. And, th and God will then give it over to him, mm. you see. Now, I'm just thinking a little bit more about inheritance. And, you know, they're, they're the two... Uh, passages that come to mind. One is uh, Naboth, and I'm sort of now reassessing my thoughts about what was the inheritance. Was it actually the land or was it the fruit of the vineyard um, that Ahab wanted to get? Mm. It probably was the well, fruit both, of the vineyard. It? it was both, yes. so they're very, they're very much related. Um, but then you also have Esau. Um, you know, what was his inheritance? It was the blessing. You know, what was it that he sold for a mess of pottage in, in, in the flesh? And, um, you know, 20 odd years ago, over 20 years ago, I, I set up a little company called Land and Life because I thought, well, they're, they're the two most important things to the Jewish people in the Middle East and to anyone, you know, land that's God's given and life, you know, to uh, worship him within the land. And the two, you know, in the Halakhic tradition is the redemption of the land and the preservation of of life mm. but now i'm thinking well a spiritual dimension to that mm. to land and life spiritual territory mm. you know and spiritual life yeah yeah so, I, you know i shall reflect long after the lights and the cameras are turned off i shall reflect on what we're talking about now yeah no this is such mm. verse eight is such a key verse yeah. and and the i think for us the most important is the first line yeah the, the second line will be fulfilled at the second coming of Christ, yeah. which is covered later in the psalm, mm. when he actually takes possession of the earth. Mm. It is his possession, but God has to give it to him mm. and release him to come. And yeah. he does that once yeah. he uh, starts breaking the scroll. Mind the you, purpose I can't of the I, land, by the way, is 
to worship God. So as uh, Satan said, you worship me and I'll give you all the, to the ends of the earth, I'll give you every, you know, all the kingdoms of this world. And the Lord replied, no, you should worship the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, this, the ultimate purpose is the glory of God, you know, to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. It is worship, you know, the ultimate fulfillment of our, our being, our, uh, you know, God creating us is to worship, worship him. So is that, is it, it's, this is the same uh, context, you know, that it's not yes. just, oh, I mean, so that I can sort of glo uh, gloat over my earthly possessions. Yeah, no. It's well, well, deeper. The, the deeper thing is that God originally, God's original plan is, was the Garden of Eden, was, was that he would, through man, rule over the earth. And of course, man blew that. Mm. But he, God is not defeated. And he is going to establish that in the millennium. Mm. He is, Christ, the second Adam, is going to use the earth, the whole earth will become a temple of the living God. The glory of That's God will exactly. cover the earth. And, the and end as objective. you say, the earth is there as yep. a place for, yep. for, for the worship of God. But another interesting point, just, I know we, we yeah, need no, to get into the last three earth. minutes. Oh, keep going, yeah. keep going, keep going. Well, okay, the, um, the, the interesting thing to me is, Psalm 110, sit at my right hand until it's time to make your enemies your footstool, right? So when Christ breaks the seven seals, he is standing, he's not sitting. He's, the lamb stands and mm, breaks the seals. Right. Why? Because he's moved into judgment mode now, mm. you see? And he is now standing. He is starting the process of bringing his enemies mm -hmm. under his feet. Mm -hmm. And that, that takes place over the tribulation. Mm. Uh, and it will be climaxed at the second coming. Mm. He will establish his kingdom on the earth. Mm. Glad you got that in. <laughs> We've still got another minute. So yeah, I'm, I'm, what you're reading. I'm just struck, you know, that, that, that we're co-heirs with Christ. I mean, yeah. this is, we talk about inheritance. And then here in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 3 to 5, says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us, mm -hmm. that's us, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance, this is us, incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the mm. last time, the revelation mm, of, the, yeah. of the sons of God, which John talks about. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is Absolutely a, it is extraordinary. Co-heirs, co-heirs, <coughs> I mean, just think about yeah. that. We've done nothing yeah. to deserve it at mm, all. Yeah. What a We've been adopted. Adopted, yes. And we've become co-heirs. Yeah. Mm. If indeed we share in his sufferings, but um, that we might also share in his glory. For I consider yes. that the sufferings of this present age are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in in yes. us. We're in the last minutes, uh, so I can see there's quite a few notes we haven't got through yet, Derek. No, but um, is good. there anything that you want to add in the last minute, or should we go into it next week? I, I no, I won't. Yeah, no, that's right. Anything I, would. No, trying to trying to <laughs> trying to do justice, but um, yeah, we're here to worship the Lord. We're yes. here to honour Him. You know, we're here to thank him for his wonderful word, for the scriptures that we're studying together. And uh, we'll be talking next week, I'm sure, we'll get to the judgments that, that is coming. And um